You're now into the design phase of your instructional design process, and you're on your way to putting together some materials for the instruction. Before you do, however, you'll want to develop an instructional strategy to provide yourself with some structure to your approach to selecting media to use in a delivery system. Up until now, you've been trying to figure out what to teach. That's the analysis phase of the ADDIE model. Now you're going to figure out how to teach. The development of an instructional strategy will help you do that. Let's take a look at the components of an instructional strategy. Your front-end analysis work will now serve you well as you look for inputs to your instructional strategy. You've got your goal and your learner and environmental analysis in hand. You've also completed your instructional analysis and developed your performance objectives. You even considered some of your assessment items. All of these pieces will feed your instructional strategy. The delivery system needs to be considered and selected as part of your instructional strategy. This is either an assumed or an active selection. Many times the delivery system is already selected, such as using a traditional classroom with an instructor and a projector, or an online class, or a self-paced module which was already determined, for instance. Even if the delivery has been selected, you'll need to consider it. If there's an opportunity to change the delivery system, then the instructional strategy part of the process is the place to consider that change. The delivery system may also have different levels. It can be lesson level, or course level, or even curriculum level. For your instructional strategy, you'll want to consider defining it through using examples such as traditional models, group lectures, computer-based, e-learning, or even combinations of different types of delivery. To make a selection of a delivery system, you'll need to consider the goal, the learner, the environment, the performance objectives, and the assessment. These are all things that you've already completed, so you'll have lots of information at hand to make a decision about the delivery system. Additionally, you may want to come back and review your selection of the delivery system after you've sequenced your components of instruction and the media you've chosen. As noted earlier, if you have some choice in the delivery system, you may want to defer the selection of it until you complete the rest of the instructional strategy process. At the heart of the instructional strategy is sequencing and clustering your content. You've started that process when you did your instructional analysis. Now you'll want to plan for the learning components of your strategy. Choose student groupings for those components and select media to deliver those components. How do you go about doing that? Let's take a look. The instructional analysis you completed earlier will now provide a baseline for sequencing your content. Take your diagram and work from the bottom up looking at your steps to determine how you're going to teach. There will be some exceptions that will require you to make some additional decisions. These exceptions include seeing skills that have the same subskills, when equipment is needed, and when boredom may occur. When some skills have the same subskills, you'll want to make a decision as to what's the best sequence for learning to use. If equipment is needed, then this may require a different sequencing for your instruction. And most importantly, if you see that boredom on the part of the learner may set in because of the way the material may be sequenced, you may want to consider a different approach. Motivation is extremely important, and we don't want to bore our learner. Once you've got a general sequence down, you'll consider what instruction to cluster together. Using the age of the learner, the complexity of the material, the type of learning involved, the variation, and the time required as the key factors for considering consideration during the clustering. During this part of the design, it's a good time to reconsider Gagne's conditions of learning. Sequencing and clustering your instruction should consider Gagne's nine events of instruction, which are gaining attention, informing the learner of the objective, stimulating recall of prerequisite learning, presenting the stimulus material, providing learning guidance, eliciting the performance, 
providing feedback, assessing the performance, and enhancing retention and transfer. Dick and Carrie suggest taking Gagne's events and structure your instructional strategy through five steps in order to best align your instruction with Gagne's events. They suggest first determining pre-instructional activities which will motivate the learner. Then inform the learner of what they will learn and stimulate recall. Secondly, Dick and Carrie suggest that you consider content presentation and determine exactly what will be used. Will it be information, concepts, rules, principles, examples, illustrations, or some other things? Third, consider learner participation and whether there will be practice or tryouts for the learner. Fourth, say Dick and Carrie, is to look at how assessment will be addressed. Will there be an entry skills test, pre-tests, practice tests, or post-tests? Finally, review your material and determine if there will be follow-through activities for the learner. Will there be a review for the learner? What items will need to be remembered? And how will the performance environment be different from the learning environment? Okay, you've sequenced and grouped your content. Now you'll dig deeper and describe the components. Consider the four areas of pre-instructional activities. Content presentation, learner participation, assessment, and follow-through. You'll want to describe the appropriate things. When it comes to pre-instructional activities, Note how you will gain attention and motivate the learner. Describe the objectives and describe how you're going to promote recall of prerequisite skills. Describe how you're going to present the content. Will there be learning guidance provided? Will there be learner participation through practice or feedback? Your instructional strategy should describe those components. Also note how assessment will be addressed. Will there be entry skills tests, or pre-tests, or post-tests? If so, describe them or note why they may not be needed. Finally, describe any follow-through activities of your content, such as memory aids that will be provided for retention purposes, or other content that will be used to provide for transfer conditions from the learning environment to the performance environment. Your instructional strategy should note if there will be special student groupings as part of the instruction. Does your instruction require social interaction in either the learning environment or the performance environment? If so, note it in your instructional strategy and identify how you will approach that requirement. As you structure your instruction, be sure to keep learner motivation in mind. Remember that motivation is an important variable in making for successful learning. Selecting media and delivery systems can be a large and complex task. Sometimes the media or delivery system is already selected for you, and you have to work with that constraint. When you do have a choice, and when designing your instruction, keep in mind a few things. First, choose your media based on the intellectual domain of your goals that you previously placed in the taxonomy table. Secondly, consider if practice with feedback is going to be required. If it is, then you'll want to choose media that supports that kind of feedback. Is physical practice going to be required? If so, your media selection will be affected. When choosing media, consider the intellectual domain. For intellectual skills, you'll want to consider media which is interactive so that you can provide feedback. If your instruction is verbal information, it may need less interactive media because your learner can make comparisons based on the information you provide. If you're choosing media for psychomotor skills, describe what the learner will do and choose media such as practice, simulations, and real coaching media. Finally. If you're working with attitude skills, choose media that provides the learner with observation and reward or approval for appropriate display of attitude. This can often mean selecting visual media or using role play media. An instructional strategy is rich in description. As you prepare an instructional strategy, be sure to include the content you'll be using, 
the strategies and activities that will be part of the instruction, and how they relate to your objectives and goals. Show examples of what you'll be doing in your instructional strategy. Note Gagne's events of instruction and ARC's model in your strategy. How does your strategy address these models? Also, your instructional strategy should include examples of instruction, the rationale for your choices, and a general timeline for your strategy. Along with writing your performance objectives, writing your instructional strategy will complete the design phase of the model of instructional design. This is a model, however, and everything looks pretty straightforward in models. The real world presents some additional challenges. Going through the development of an instructional strategy will help to minimize those challenges and will also help to maximize your resources during the complex process of instructional design.